Hi, I'm Wes Turnbull and I'm going to explain the difference between a brushless and a brushed motor today. First, we'll start with a brushed motor. This is a common brushed motor we've used for many years in the RC cars. It has an armature inside, motor brushes and springs and an end bell. You remove the springs and the brushes and we'll tear this apart and show you exactly how it works. That is your motor brushes. The end bells are removable. On this one it has adjustable timing so we loosen two screws here. Rotate the end bell a little bit and it should pop right off, just like that. Inside we have the armature. This is the commutator surface where the brushes actually rotate on and energize the windings. Inside is the armature stack. This is a six turn motor from the looks of it and it's probably a six turn double because they have dual wires wrapping six times around each segment. It has epoxy to secure the windings and sits inside two magnets. The magnets are attached to the can usually with epoxy and has a little metal spring inside here to keep it from popping out should the epoxy ever fail. There's shims to support this sitting in the bearings. When it goes in it's magnetically attracted. The end bell goes back on. You reassemble with springs and everything. Hook it up to your electronic speed control and it will work. Electronic speed controls like this for the older brushed style motors have two wires. This converts the DC into DC. What it does, it switches on and off so many thousand times per second to regulate the current to the motor. So that's how you get a speed control. When we get into brushless motor technology, we have two different styles. There is the Outrunner style motor, which has a very large case. This is an aircraft type one. The out, outer portion of the can has the magnets in it. All the windings are secured inside. So the motor shaft is attached to the can and rotates like so. This also has three wires. We'll get into that in a sec. This is an inrunner style motor. This is a lot like the common brushed motor in look, but not in design. The windings are in the outside of the can, and the magnet is the armature that sits in the middle. This is a small style for an aircraft that goes into a gearbox. Larger ones like this would go into RC cars. Same similar situation. You have a shaft, you put your pinning gear on, and everything else. The speed control, though, is a little bit different when we go to brushless. Now we're going from DC voltage to AC voltage, because we have three terminals. The three terminals go to the motor and convert the DC to an AC signal. So we go from DC to alternating current to energize the windings. The speed control will fire these leads in order to make the motor turn. KV voltage ratings on motors basically are that for each kilovolt you get 3600 RPM out of the motor. The higher this number, the less voltage you'll actually need to use to motivate it. When you want to go with a higher voltage in your battery pack, use a lower KV, similar to this one in the 1250 range. This one is a high KV motor for car applications and must have a gearbox to operate it. This one is meant for direct drive applications and is a higher torque because of its lower KV rating. This will turn a propeller without a gearbox. This, if you were to put it into an aircraft, will require a gearbox to crank a propeller. There's the basic information regarding brushless and brushed motors. I hope this was a help to you, and thank you for listening. Now it's time for the Big Boys with Cool Toys Tech Tip of the Week. Hi, welcome to Big Boys with Cool Toys Tech Tip of the Week. I'm Alex Morgan, and today we're going to talk to you about Bind and Fly and Ready to Fly. Now, Ready to Fly models include most of the stuff you see in the box, which will be a transmitter, possibly batteries for your transmitter, helicopter or plane, your charger, batteries for your charger, or a plug for the wall for your charger. This kit includes, from eFlight, the MCX, everything as a ready-to-fly model. So that model right here, we would have everything ready, your battery installed, helicopter, transmitter, and your charger ready to go. Bind and fly models, like you'll see on top the same model, 
if you have no radio in the box, that's the binary fly. The binary fly model is good for if you do start with a beginner model like this one, the CX, MCX helicopter, and you switch to something that's collective pitch, which is an intermediate helicopter, and you want to use the same radio. So let's plug this in right here. Wait a couple seconds so they can connect to each other. Once they connect to each other, you can take it off, fly it, learn how to fly the helicopter, right? Then you basically land, bring it back. Now you're ready for the next stage, perhaps to move to the intermediate when you come to the hobby store several months later. Do I have to buy another transmitter, a ready to fly model, like the Blade 120 with the transmitter? You do not. You can save some money by purchasing the BNF model with no transmitter and use your existing transmitter. Or at this point, if you know you're into the hobby, you may want to purchase a more advanced radio like a DX7, which has 20 memory model modes. Now, what that means is you can program 20 different airplanes or helicopters into this one model. And then you can, when you turn it on every time, you can have your beginning helicopter, an intermediate helicopter, and possibly even if you have maybe an airplane or two. And with this remote, you get eliminate all of your other remotes and you don't have to waste the money on buying all ready to fly models from this company. And that is your big boys tech tip of the week.